Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Ghost and today we are going to be taking a look at the Tier 6 Premium British Battle Cruiser HMS Hood. So, this ship I did get out of a crate. I've actually played this in the past. I used to have a super big issue with selling ships and uh, well, it looks like I got this thing back luckily and uh, that's, uh, that's good because I'm going to keep it around. Um, this is a very good ship. Um, in the in the match in particular, you guys are going to watch later on in the video. It wasn't a great game by any means, but it was a decent little game to show off. Kind of fun. Uh, this ship is definitely one of those ships that you have to be good in. Uh, you have to have some level of skill to play. It's not an easy ship. Anyway, we're not going to talk about that yet. We're going to talk about that a little later in the review portion and talking about the armor. But... Anyway, let's go and take a look uh, uh, at the ship and stuff. So far, I mean, just by looking at her, she's a good-looking ship. I like the look of her. Very, very sleek. Uh, slick design. Very sleek and just very nice-looking. You know, in real life, funny enough, the um, the people that were um, that were actually on board HMS Hood, the people that served on it, actually did take very good care of the ship. Uh, so the paint you guys see on this ship is actually not that far off from the historical camo or the historical look like it was in real life they took very good care of the ship in real life mainly because it was the pride of the british royal navy it was the flagship of the british royal navy for the longest time up till it up until it got sunk in the famous battle of the denmark strait so yeah this this was a very 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 uh important ship to the british uh royal navy and when they lost it there definitely was a uh a let's just say a big morale drop there for sure but nonetheless enough talking about the history um let's go and talk about the upgrades and loadout here we are running aiming systems mod one we're running propulsion mod two and we're running consumer systems mod one she's a tier six premium battleship so you only get three uh, you only get three slots here okay which is just fine enough now let's go and take a look at the loadout this ship does have access to high explosive armor piercing, a standard damage control party, three repair parties, and three, or sorry, two sonars. I am running the Legends Veteran four-year flag, and I'm running the Type 9 camo that the ship comes with. I do like it a lot. Now, I do have this camo here. Um, however, let's be real. This is the camo basically after it got sunk, and uh -uh. and it, this ain't gonna cut it, homie. This ain't gonna cut it. Uh, it looks really cool, but like, goddamn, it's ugly as hell. I like to have the sleek camo. You guys let me know in the comments below. Do you guys like this camo more, or do you like the sunken camo more? Let me know in the comments below. I'm actually interested in hearing on what you guys have to say there. But, anyway, let's take a look at the specs here. Survivability rating is currently 80 on my build. We've got 67,700 hit points. We've got 13 through, uh, through 381 millimeters of armor. And the ship has a 16% torpedo damage reduction. Not very good for a battle ship, but this is a battle cruiser at the end of the day. It doesn't have very good armor whatsoever. We're going to cover that in the armor viewer portion. Don't you guys worry. Now, for the main batteries. This is where the ship really shines. Um, this ship has access to the classic 15-inch, 381mm guns that are found on the Warspite, the Queen Elizabeth, the Vanguard, and more. These 15-inch guns... These 381 millimeter 42 Mark II's are fantastic. And, uh, yeah, there's nothing else to be said. They're fantastic guns. But they shoot out to 17.6 kilometers on my build. I've got a 25 second reload and a 27.7 second 180 degree turn time, which is pretty good for battleship guns. The HE shell maximum damage is 5,300 with a 34% chance of setting a fire. And the AP shell maximum damage, if you get a Citadel, is 13,082. Secondary armaments, we've got a bunch of 102mm guns that shoot out to 5.2 kilometers with a 3 second reload. 6% chance of setting a fire, 1500 maximum damage on those secondaries. Now, the AA defense. The AA is pretty mediocre, it's nothing too spectacular, but it is pretty good. Um, you've got around 150 average damage per second on the AA. You got some nice little 12.7mm um, uh, millimeter Mark III guns that do basically no damage um, that shoot out to 1.2 kilometers 
with 8% uh, average damage per second. You've got some 40 millimeter Vickers 2 pounder Mark 8s that shoot out to 2.5 kilometers with a 59 second reload or average damage, I mean, sorry. <laughs> and uh, the 102 millimeter secondaries that we saw in the artillery section, those secondaries are dual purpose, which means they also count as anti aircraft. So our little 100 millimeter secondaries are also shooting uh, flat clouds out there that do a uh, average damage of 66, five kilometer range. And this thing has access to UPAA rocket Mark 1s. This thing technically has rockets and it actually counts as AA, 50 average per second. Now you're not gonna see rockets getting fired off the ship, but it's there, it counts as AA damage, but you won't see rockets though, trust me. Now for the maneuverability. Now since this ship is a battle cruiser, it is very fast, okay? The hood is a very fast ship for a battleship. 28 knot speed on my build. If I was to take off gyrating drill bits, that speed could easily get over 30 knots. You could easily make this thing into a speed build battleship and go around the map at 33 plus knots. It's a battle cruiser. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, the turning circle radius is Iowa-esque. It's very bad. 910 meter turning circle radius with a 14.1 second rudder. The concealment on my build, detectability range by sea is 12.6. Detectability range by air is 10.6. The guaranteed detectability range is 2, of course. And a 13.5 detectability while firing in smoke screens. Now, the armor on this ship. The armor is not very good. If we take a look at the bow and stern plating armor here, see that little green, that green plating? Yeah, 25 millimeters of armor. This means that we can ricochet up to 14 inches. Anything bigger than 14 inches will go straight through our bow like hot butter. And there's a lot of ships at tier six and seven that have overmatch. Hell, even some tier fives have overmatch. So you really gotta be watching out uh, and you really gotta be careful. Now, it doesn't, have, it doesn't have very good bow armor or stern armor, however, this ship does have a very good belt armor. If we take a look at the belt armor, take away that, take away the torpedo bulge, take away the uh, the uh, take away the superstructure. If we take a look at the belt, we've got a uh, 102 through 305 millimeter armor belt. We got some uh, very good athwart ship armor, 102 millimeters to 127 millimeters. So let's just say, for example, you're trying to go at a ship. The best angle is like this angle. Basically, what you want to be doing is baiting people to shoot your bow and swing out and have those shells hit your hit your belt, okay? You do not want to be taking big shells through the bow if you can help it. You really want to be careful. You want to be trying to get people to bait, basically bait shots into your belt. So, got to be careful. This thing does not have very good bow or stern armor. Now, if you take a look at the Citadel, the Citadel is almost pretty much below the waterline. Uh, that's right. This thing has a very, very uh, low Citadel. So, the odds of you getting Citadel at close range are very slim, but you still can. Let's just say, for example, if you were to turn hard to port, it would raise your starboard side citadel, okay? So if you just were sailing in a straight line at, let's just say, sub five kilometers, odds of you getting citadeled are slim to none. So there you go. For the overview, it's fast, very true. It's got sticky shot, very true. And it's tough. I wouldn't say it's tough, but it does have a lot of hit points, 67,000. Now, if you take a look at the commander, I'm running Andrew Cunningham. I've got Paulo the Rebel and Otto Ciliax as inspirations. Concentrated Devastation as the base trait. We have Flammable Cannoneer, Gyrating Drill Bits, Marksmanship, Reaching Out XXL, and Skill to Rebuild, aka Will to Rebuild. He's a Legendary 3, Rank 16 Captain, and enough jibber jabbering. I do apologize. We're about nine minutes into the review portion, but we have to do it. But nonetheless, if you guys have stuck in this far, make sure you go down there, hit that like button, help out the uh, help out the channel, help out the video by getting it out there. That's right, if you guys hit that like button, it does help out. So seriously, and if you're not already subscribed, consider doing that as well. And uh, nonetheless, enough jibber jabbering. Let's go ahead and head on over to the gameplay portion of today's video. I hope you all do enjoy it. It's not the greatest match in the world, but it's a pretty fun one at the end. I hope you all do enjoy it. Alrighty, so here we are in HMS Hood, everybody's favorite British battle cruiser out there. Let's be real, guys. The Hood is a fantastic ship. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say she's fantastic. Maybe I'm giving her a little bit too much glamour there, but she is definitely a great battle cruiser in the right hands. You just gotta be careful. Positioning is key. 
However, in this game in particular, positioning will uh, not really play a huge role in this game. We're literally going to shoot a few rounds at this Colorado, and then we're going to kite out because of certain things. Uh, we're not going to spoil too much here, but let's just say this is one of those weird games. This is one of those average games. It's nothing crazy, okay? If you guys are coming into this video for crazy, you're in the wrong house, fool. <laughs> but no, seriously, it's not a great game, but it's an okay game to show off. These are my average games I get all the time, okay? I'm not cherry-picking the games like I usually do for this video in particular. This is, a, this is a good boat, but it requires a certain taste, and you definitely uh, have to get into the right sort of match uh, to get that taste to kind of get into full swing. I'm really describing that weirdly, ain't I? But anyway... What I'm trying to say here is this ship is definitely better at high, uh, when it's top tier. If you're in a tier 7 game, it's it's almost like it's almost impossible to do very good unless all the tier 7s just roll over and let you fuck them basically. <laughs> Sorry for the language there, not really. But yeah, so basically when you're up when you're up tiered, it's a lot harder to do well in. But when you're top tier in this thing like in a tier 5 lobby, oh man. This ship is deadly. But you can't sneeze on this ship, though. Like, you can't fucking sleep on it. You can't sneeze on it. Whatever. You can't sleep on it. I think that's what I meant to say. But, you know, whatever. Anyway. Because if you sleep on this shit, uh, if you sleep on this thing, you know, you might get slapped. Like that Atlantico. That Atlantico just took around 10, 15, 20,000 damage because he's like, oh, well, it's a hood. Surely, he won't do anything to me, right? That ship got detonated at the Battle of Denmark Strait. That ship's a joke, right? No, 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 no. That's where you're wrong. You see, the hood has bad armor, yes. The hood has mediocre AA. It's got mediocre secondaries. But what it makes up for that in uh, is in the gun department. The guns on this ship are phenom uh, phenomenal. The classic British 15-inch guns, man. There's nothing greater, I don't think. I think these guns are fantastic. I don't know about you guys. Now, on Vanguard, for example, for me anyway, when I played the Vanguard, I couldn't stand it. Uh, the 15-inch guns at Tier 7 kind of are lackluster. They get a little, um, let's just say, uh, it's, it's not that good at Tier 7, but on the Tier 5, on the Tier 6s, man, these 15-inch guns are fantastic for the Tier. They have overmatch. They punch. I mean, as you guys can see there, three shells. We did about 10, 15,000 damage there to that North Carolina. Yeah. This ship smacks broadsides. Eight 15 inch, uh, 15 inches of doom, man. They're fantastic. I, I don't know what else. It, uh, I don't know what else to say. Now, this ship also does have very good hit points. Now, you're gonna get, you're gonna lose a lot of those hit points because you don't got very good armor. Um, of course, the North Carolina hits me with two shells and sets a fire because, of course, he does. So in two seconds, I'm gonna put out that single fire because I'm like, bro, get this shit off me. <laughs> get this shit off of me. I don't want that on me. So we put out that fire because we're not having any of that crap. That's some bull crap. He's actually, um, he's actually gonna get absolutely wrecked here very shortly. Just watch. Um, let's just say he's not long for this world. So yeah, it looks like our team on the other side of the map has done excelente up to this point. However, uh, on this side of the map in particular, there's nobody over here except me. There's an Atlantico, there's a Colorado, there's a Destroyer, there's a fucking Atlanta. Part of my language once again. But, yeah, there's a lot of things out here on this side of the map that can absolutely screw me. So I'm not having any of it. That's kind of why guys have been playing a lot, a lot more passively in this game in particular. It's because I'm not going to risk my ship. Um, I would rather stay alive to fight another day than go in there and die, okay? I'm not completely abandoning this side, I'm just strategically positioning. I'm moving my battleship, as Zarkoon would say. <laughs> but, yeah, you just you gotta be careful, man. This ship is not designed to take hits. It really isn't. You guys saw the armor. It's got good belt armor, don't get me wrong, but it, it has a lot of superstructure. It's got a lot... Uh, it's got pretty pretty bad deck armor, so this thing is very susceptible to HE spam. It's very susceptible to getting absolutely blapped if people aim where they need to aim. Basically anywhere above the deck. We see all that superstructure or on the bow and stern of the ship. It's got horrible armor um, and it really takes punches like that. One shell hit us there and hit us for 4,000. That's not fun. Um, that really isn't fun. I've been deleted plenty of times in this ship because it just does not have very, very good armor. It does have very good belt armor, don't get me wrong. If you can get people to actually shoot at your belt, 
um, you can have a pretty good time ricocheting the majority of the shells that get fired at you. However, uh, people that are smart will aim I, aim up high and hit you in the superstructure and smack you for 10, 15, 20,000 in the right hands. Or they'll just aim at your bow and absolutely blap you there. Because anything with 15-inch guns or bigger will just go straight through that like butter. Now, the Atlantico just fired his front guns at me, and he actually hit me on the belt there, and I just ricocheted a 15-inch round off my belt. That's fantastic. And we just absolutely smacked him because we aimed up high, and we knocked out one of his guns. Now, there's some torpedoes here. Who, who, could, uh, who could be sending those torpedoes, I wonder? Well... Spoiler alert, it's the uh, Akizuki. Not the Akatsuki, it's the Akizuki. You know, the destroyer with a lot of guns, but very mediocre torpedoes. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say they're mediocre. He only gets one rack. Like, that's it. But he has a reload booster. And I'm a very big, big ship. So dodging these torpedoes is almost next to impossible. Um, I'm 100% taking one here, unfortunately. I almost dodge him. I almost make it. But I unfortunately take one there unfortunately now one thing i forgot to mention is that this ship has sonar i know we're 16 minutes into the video and i haven't even talked about the sonar yet the sonar isn't the greatest it's not german or anything but it's okay it's okay sonar it's definitely handy in those situations where you're taking you know taking a lot of uh, hate from destroyers like if you have a suspicious uh, feeling inside of you that hey you know there's a destroyer around there might be torps coming it's a good idea to pop that sonar i've actually that uh, that sonar has actually saved my life on quite a few occasions um it really has now that destroyer is shooting some of his guns and i'm like bro i'm gonna blind fire just for the shits and giggles uh, little do i know he's actually backing up so i'm not gonna be able to hit him there but uh basically guys my goal now is to just ram the the match is pretty much over with and there's really nothing much else to do but yeah, let's just ram, right? We're on no HP, and we might as well. I aim as I aim at his guns there to hopefully knock him out, just in case he uh, gets a reload. But nope, he doesn't, and that's our first kill of the game, and our last because well, we're dead. We rammed him. But yeah, like I said in the beginning of the video, not a very good game, but it's an okay game. It was a fun game. Uh, we basically came back in and just rammed the shit out of this guy. We smacked around the Colorado a little bit more, and our team is gonna be able to come on in here. And uh, clean things up, you know, clean house, basically. So, yeah, that's the hood, guys. It's a good ship. I've had plenty of great games. Unfortunately, I haven't recorded all of them. Um, otherwise, I would have a very a much better game for you guys. But overall, I think the hood is a good ship. Uh, would I say it's worth you going out of your way? Like, oh my god, I need to get this ship. Oh, I need to spend $60 to get this thing right now because Dr. Ghost is saying it's good. No. You guys can live without the hood. The hood is a good ship, don't get me wrong, but is it worth you going out of your way to slap down a freaking mortgage for it? Probably not. So you're not missing out is what I'm saying. The War Spite, the Queen Elizabeth. Um, the Queen Elizabeth is free. You guys can get it in the tech tree. She's just as good. She's a tier lower. She's got the same exact 15-inch guns pretty much. A little different. Short fuse AP on the Queen Elizabeth. So overall, this ship is very good. Um, it, I wouldn't say it's very good. It's good. It's not very good. It's not very bad either. It's fast. It's not very agile because it's a very long and very, uh, very, very, um, let's just say not very, uh, in terms of turning, not very good. Um, but overall, I'd say the ship is pretty good just because of the guns. The guns are fantastic and it's got a lot of hit points. Then again, that hit those hit points get absolutely just chewed up by anything. Um, it's fast, it's got sonar, it's got some pretty good British heels, forgot to mention. So overall, I think it's a pretty good ship. It's, it's a good ship to have in your port. You're not really missing out, though, if you can't get it. So don't worry about it. But nonetheless, everybody, that's going to go ahead and do it for this one. Uh, it looks like the enemy team is, or it looks like our friendly team is trying to find that enemy destroyer. But if you look at the top there at the points, we're about to point out. So it doesn't really matter if we find the destroyer or not, but... Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of HMS Hood. Do you guys have the ship? Do you guys like it if you have it? Do you not have the ship? Are you going to pick it up or are you just going to let it slip on by? It's going to be in the store forever, so you're not really, uh, it's not going anywhere. But anyway, nonetheless, look at that. 112,000 damage. <laughs> one kill, one flood because we rammed at the end there. 1990 XP. We play second on the leaderboard in a tier 7 match. Not too bad. Despite us kind of ramming at the end there and YOLOing Hail Mary attempt at the end, not a bad game whatsoever.
But uh, anyways, if you guys have made it this far in, I seriously thank you. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this one. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, stay healthy as always.